So Xiaomi's Redmi Note 13 Pro 5G is finally glowing, go, going, glo, glowing, going global. Jesus Christ. So us Brits can enjoy a tasty bit of hardware at a price that won't absolutely skint us. So let's do a wee unboxing and then I'm going to slap my SIM in there, use it for a few days as my full time phone. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So what do you get in that box? Well, you've got yourself a Redmi Note 13 Pro, a 67 watt power adapter, a USB cable. And yes, Xiaomi has also chucked in a condom case to keep your Redmi Note 13 Pro in good nick. And that's all the goodies packed in the box. So time to slip my SIM inside. Now, one thing that's certainly worth pointing out before I start banging on at length about the Redmi Note 13 Pro is that it is incredibly similar to the Poco X6 5G, which I only just reviewed last week. Hence, shifting from that phone to this phone gave me a rather strong sense of deja vu. Most of the specs are the same, barring the camera tech, the software is basically identical. So if you've already seen my Poco X6 stuff from last week, I don't say this often, but it's probably worth just sort of skipping to the camera bit of this review. And even then, there's pretty much bugger all difference, to be perfectly honest. However, I do have to say I absolutely prefer the design here on the Redmi Note 13 Pro compared with that Poco. Those Poco phones, just absolute grease magnets. Those things pick up fingerprints and fluff like toddlers pick up random shit off the ground. However, thankfully, blissfully, no such war here on the Redmi Note 13 Pro. As you can see, even though it's still a placky finish, you've got a matte surface here. So don't worry about daintily fondling it or anything. You can get full on in there with your fingers. And as you can see, still looks lush. I haven't had to give this thing a proper buffing up once the entire time I've been using it. And I really like the color scheme as well. This is the purple model, but you can also grab the Redmi Note 13 Pro in black or teal which I think is a kind of blue-y colour. Don't quote me on that, colours are not my forte. You got the jazzy multicolour squareage of that camera bump, which does sadly stick out quite a bit from that back end. So yeah, you get the usual wobblage if you're using the Redmi on a desk or any kind of flat surface. It's kind of a shame that the Redmi Note 13 Pro isn't offered in the same fake leather finish as the Pro Plus model. I did really rather like that, but as I say, at least it doesn't look like absolute crap after you've been handling it for more than about five minutes. And even though it is placky through and through, thankfully the Redmi Note 13 Pro does not feel cheap. You've got this sort of textured, almost metallic style finish to the edge, and even though that frame is, again, placky. And reasonably skinny bezels surrounding that now standard 6.67 inch display. In further good news, you've got not only Gorilla Glass Victus protecting that screen, but also you've got a pre-installed screen protector on here as well, which is great news because Victus does tend to scratch up, even though it is highly impact resistant. And like that Poco, this blower is IP54 splash resistant, so it's fine if it gets a bit moist. And take it out in slightly inclement weather, but if you want a phone that will survive a full-on dunking in water, you'll have to upgrade to the Pro Plus, which is IP68 water and dust resistant. Uh, now, as you just saw, you do have a bit of face and lock action as usual here on the Redmi Note 13 Pro. No surprises there. You've also got an in-display fingerprint sensor, which has been really, really good. Not even put off by slightly damp hands and uh, honestly, that's the one time I've seen it f up pretty much all week. I think maybe one other time. And then just then the wallpaper taking half a second to actually pop into existence as well. That's the first time I've seen that. I don't know what's going on with this phone today. Clearly even less of a fan of early starts than I am. But anywho, any software quirk should hopefully be kicked right in the knackers pretty damn soon. Because at the moment, unfortunately, it is MIUI 14 slapped on this thing. This should be upgraded in the very near future to the fresh new Xiaomi Hyper OS launcher, which looks remarkably similar to MIUI, as you'll see in my Poco X6 versus Poco X6 Pro review. But it's been built from the ground up with fresh new architecture, feels nice and nippy, takes up less space, and is apparently more energy efficient, although it's kind of tricky to tell. I've spent a little bit of time with HyperOS so far and very impressed with how stable it is. Very few bugs stuffed in there for a fresh new launcher. And despite running the older MIUI, thankfully the Redmi Note 13 Pro has been pretty well behaved as well. Up until this bloody morning, at least. One of my only complaints really is the fact that the always on display will only actually reveal itself for up to 10 seconds when you tap the screen when the phone is hibernating. So not quite as always on as that name suggests. 
And also, sadly, as always, Xiaomi has absolutely stuffed this thing with crapware. I may be personally installed probably not even half the number of apps that are stacked on this thing. And I naturally would have just deleted most of them straight off the bat, but I wanted to just keep them on here just to demonstrate how ridiculous the situation was. And some of it can't actually be got rid of, but thankfully most of it can. It's not too terrible. That's pretty much all I have to gripe about here on the Redmi Note 13 Pro. And to get back to the positive stuff, hooray, I asked Xiaomi how much software support this bad boy would receive. And the good news is four years of security patching and three OS updates. So it's great to see that software commitment now come into the more sort of mid-range budgety handsets. And it's also great to see that the Redmi Note 13 Pro 5G comes with a minimum of 256 gigs of storage space. That can be upgraded to half a terabyte. So that's double the base amount you get on the likes of the iPhone, which costs probably over twice as much. Just note that you can't expand that if you do eventually manage to fill it via micro SD. There's only space in the SIM tray for two SIMs. And you've also got a tasty bit of eSIM support here on the Redmi Note 13 Pro 5G, which is great to see. Not many mid-rangers support that feature still. And that'll be particularly handy if you bugger off abroad quite a lot. You need to get an eSIM slapped in there just for a week or so, so you can continue to use data. Now, as for that 6.67 inch AMOLED display, well, it's basically the same tech here as what you find on the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus and also that Poco X6 5G. Like most AMOLED panels these days, you can expect quite poppy color reproduction, although you can mess around with those tones in the display settings. It is set to vivid by default. You've got lovely wide viewing angles on the tiny wee selfie orifice stuck away up there in that top edge so it only slightly intrudes on the action I would prefer it if it was tucked away in a corner like the Pro Plus it's a 1.5k resolution so pretty crisp despite the fact you've got a good screen size here and of course a lovely sharp contrast as well you got full Dolby Vision streaming support here on the likes of Netflix and powerfully bright when you ramp it up as well almost hits 2000 nits in fact outdoors so you'll have no issues whatsoever, even watching fairly murky fare on the likes of Disney Plus and Netflix. As far as the refresh rate goes, there's no real range here. It basically hits either 60 hertz or 120 hertz. But if you bump it up to 120, you can choose exactly which apps use that refresh rate. Or you can just stick the Redmi Note 13 Pro on the default refresh rate, which will automatically jump between 60 and 120 to match whatever you're up to. And as you would hope, you do have a full stereo speaker setup here on the Redmi Note 13 Pro 5G. And that's pretty bloody good as well. Let's bump up that volume. And that's pretty smart design as well, because say you fumble and drop the earbuds case, well, it doesn't immediately spring open and spill out your earbuds so they end up lodged under the sofa or inside the cat or something. The overall balance is slightly more in favour of that downwards firing speaker here on the bottom edge, but overall, nice and crisp and clear. As always, I wouldn't recommend listening to music through it, but absolutely fine for just a quick bit of YouTube, Netflix, whatever. You've got that Dolby Atmos support and, as usual, an equaliser so you can mess around with the audio output, get it just how you like it. I do like how there's a metal preset as well, great stuff. But what about the brains of this bad boy? Well, Xiaomi has shoved inside Qualcomm's Snapdragon 7S Gen 2. That's back to my review model by 8 gigs of that lovely RAM stuff. And the everyday performance has been perfectly satisfactory here. Occasional little jealous, but nothing troublesome whatsoever. And certainly gamers will enjoy a good bit of Genshin Impact action, although I'd recommend not bumping it all the way up to the highest graphic settings because the frame rate isn't exactly super fluid. You will see quite a few stumbles here and then. Everything looks a lot smoother on the sort of low to medium graphic settings. And yes, that's even the case if you get a bit of boost mode action on the go in Game Turbo, which by the way, packed with lots of great features, well worth checking out. And after a lengthy gaming session, the Redmi Note 13 Pro 5G did start to get a wee bit warm to the touch, but again, nothing to worry about. I didn't see any drop in that performance over time and all remained pretty stable. Alrighty, so, so far the Redmi Note 13 Pro sports the same software, the same display, the same performance as that Poco X6. And guess what? When it comes to the battery tech, identical. A 5,100 mAh capacity cell with 67 watt wired charging. And the good news is I haven't struggled to make it through a full day on just a single charge of the Redmi Note 13 Pro since I started testing it. Most days I end with around sort of 25 to 30% battery life and that's with a lot of screen on time. We're talking sort of six to seven-ish hours. Usually a good bit of audio streaming in the background, a good bit of camera testing, all that good stuff. 
The only chance you have of properly putting this thing into battery saver mode is if you do a lot of video calling or you play a lot of Genshin Impact basically. And then with that 67 watt charge and you're not hanging around too long waiting for it to power back up, you can basically plug it in for about sort of 30, 40 minutes in the morning when you stagger out of bed. Just enough time to drag a toothbrush around your mouth and a comb over your head if you've actually got hair. And that should see you through a full day. But no wireless charging here on the Redmi Note 13 Pro. Pretty standard, this sort of price point. It's rare to find still. So far, so very familiar. But one area where this Redmi blower does differentiate from that Poco is the camera tech. Or at least as far as that primary shooter is concerned because it's a 200 megapixel Samsung HP3 sensor here. Though, of course, as far as the camera app itself goes, that is familiar territory. Thankfully, easy enough to use one-handed. You can just swipe down with your thumb like so to bring up all the various toggles and features. Also got fast access to all the various camera modes and you can completely rearrange and rejigger all of this. It's fully personalizable. Personal, personalizable? Is that even a word? It is now. Now this right here is the same camera hardware as you'll find in the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus. So no real surprises that the photos spaffed out by the Pro are similar. This phone once again struggled with living subjects at times. You can certainly expect some blur if they refuse to stay still, so that's kids and pets right out at times. Colors edge closer to natural rather than vivid, even with the AI mode active, and tricky contrast is usually dealt with just fine. You've got a fairly decent portrait mode to help your subjects stand out from the background, although as with the Pro Plus, this did struggle with more fuzzy subjects. And that night mode can help to brighten up your pics if your hands are steady enough. Otherwise, the Redmi Note 13 Pro is pretty handy in dimmer light. You won't get too much flaring and you've got enough detail packed in there so the photos don't look crap when they're blown right up. And that's helped right along by the 16 in 1 pixel bin, which comes courtesy of that big old 200 megapixel sensor. And of course, you've got a good bit of optical image stabilization on here too. Now, if you switch to the 200 meg high res mode when the lighting is on your side, you will capture a bit more detail so you can crop into your shot if needed. That's basically a makeshift alternative to a proper telephoto lens, which you most certainly do not get slapped on the Redmi Note 13 Pro. In fact, the backup options here are a basic 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter and a waste of space 2 megapixel macro snapper. And bugger all shocks or surprises when it comes to the video smarts, you can capture full HD 1080p video at 30 or 60 frames per second, otherwise, bump up to 4K Ultra HD resolution and it's 30 FPS all the way. And you get quite unremarkable results for mid-range mobile. Those visuals are fine if you're not shooting in low light. The focus is generally well behaved. Stabilization is okay. Just try not to move around too much. And that audio is picked up cleanly enough from all directions. And then last up, my lovelies, that final bit of optics is a 16 megapixel front face and selfie cam. And this does capture grainy, noisy pics drained of color when the lighting sucks, but otherwise does a respectable enough job. A wee bit of borkiness at times with the portrait mode, but nothing extreme. You can generally work out what's my bald head and what's background. And there you have it, you wonderful buggers. That's what I reckon of Xiaomi's Redmi Note 13 Pro 5G after using it as my full-time smartphone for a good few days. Gotta say, very, very similar to that Poco X6, but I do prefer the Redmi purely because of that lovely matte finish. It gets a lot less skanky, which makes me a lot more happy. Be good to see a proper bit of HyperOS on here, but as usual, solid hardware, and it's great to see that Xiaomi is offering that dedicated software support on its more mid-range mobiles these days. So that's what I reckon anyway. Be great to hear your thoughts on the Xiaomi Redmi Note 13 Pro 5G down in the comments below. Please do pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell, use your YouTube bollocks, and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone.